Francesca Evans with your weekly update on the latest news, sport, weather forecast and what's on this weekend in the Lyme Regis area. Major structural repairs to protect the historic cob in Lyme Regis are now expected to be delayed for up to a year. Repairs and improvements to the Grade 1 listed landmark and harbour wall will be the fifth and final phase of the Lyme Regis Environmental Improvement Scheme, which started in the early 1990s with the construction of Guncliffe Walk and the sewage treatment works. The work was due to have started in summer 2024 for an estimated cost of £3 million, but Dorset councillors have now been told that technical changes have resulted in the need for further design work, which will result in unbudgeted additional costs. If no work was to be carried out to protect the cob, it is said there is a high risk that the historic structure could fail completely within 20 years. In the meantime, small repair works are expected to take place shortly on the high wall of the Cobb, which has been closed to the public for several weeks due to storm damage. South West Water has said that it will be applying to fast track funding to clean up the River Lim. The highly criticised water company previously reported that £20 million would be available from 2025 onwards to clean up the river, but it will now be applying to regulator Offwat to bring the investment programme forward. This follows a year of campaigning by volunteers and a slew of damning press reports about the staggering levels of E. coli and subsequent lack of wildlife in the River Lim, which has now been declared ecologically dead. Despite previously being heavily criticised for his voting record on the subject, West Dorset MP Chris Loder has said he is continuing to work to see the River Lim cleaned up. He has given his backing to a campaign to have Churchcliffe Beach in Lyme Regis redesignated as a bathing beach, which will result in more resources from South West Water and the Environment Agency to improve the water quality. He recently met with Chief Operating Officer of South West Water in Westminster to discuss the issues. Changes are being proposed to the historic Royal Lion Hotel in Lyme Regis to make the venue more inviting to non-residents. Having purchased the Town Centre Hotel in early 2022, Dorset-based brewery Hall & Woodhouse is now looking to make changes to the entrance lobby and entrance to the bar area, which they say will make the bar area the primary focus when entering the building from Broad Street. The Grade 2 listed Royal Lion Hotel was formerly two separate inns, the Lion and later Royal Lion and the New Inn or New Commercial Inn. The Lion is a 17th century coaching inn thought to be founded in the early 1600s. It played host to King Edward VII for one night when he was still the Prince of Wales in the late 19th century, after which it added royal to its title, and is also said to have been visited by author Jane Austen and American painter James Whistler. Questions about the future of NHS services will be addressed at a public open forum hosted by Lyme Bay Medical Centre's Patient Participation Group next week. The meeting will be held from 7pm on Tuesday, June 20th at Upline Village Hall. Kate Calvert, a senior officer of the NHS Dorset Integrated Care Board with responsibility for community and primary care, will be taking questions from the public. She'll be assisted by local GP Dr Forbes Watson in his capacity as chair of the Dorset GP Alliance. But the event will deal with matters far wider than GP provision, covering many aspects of non-hospital care, community and mental health services, social care, public health and voluntary services. Upline Village Fate enjoyed its biggest ever turnout despite the long-running dry spell breaking just as the event got underway. The fete was held last Saturday afternoon at the King George playing field in Upline. After weeks of sunshine, rain showers started just before the event, but organisers said this worked to their advantage as it brought many visitors off the beach. The event included many stalls run by local organisations, charities and craftspeople, as well as entertainment from Lime Regis Majorettes, Wild Morris, the Lime Luggers Ukulele Group and local band We Funk, a barbecue and many attractions for children. On the field of play, this has not been the best season for Lyme Regis Football Club. Like many grassroots sports organisations, the Seasiders have struggled to recover from COVID and at times found it difficult to field two sides in the Devon and Exeter League. The first team finished just below halfway in the Premier League, no disgrace by any means in the highest standard in which they have competed. The reserves, however, who play in Division 3, did not fare so well, ending second from the bottom. But spirits were still high when players, officials and supporters gathered for their annual presentation night at Lyme Regis Golf Club. Principal guests were the new Mayor of Lyme Regis, Councillor David Sarson and his wife Erica, who were attending their first event as the town's first citizens. 
A highlight of the night was the announcement that Betty Hitchcock, who runs the club's ladies fundraising group, was presented with the Jack Loveridge Trophy for Club Champion of the Year in recognition of her stalwart work for the Seasiders over many years. Later, she received a standing ovation when she was also made a life member. Betty, mother of club chairman Gerard Hitchcock, was the wife of the late Ken Hitchcock, who served the club for more than 60 years as a player, committee member and caretaker, and was also a life member. Other trophies went to Dan Beer, Callum Garrett, Toby Fowler, Will Meach, Robbie Fowler and top goalscorer Brad Rowe. The club has now turned its attention to the appointment of new managers for the coming season, with announcements to be made soon. Up Lyme and Lyme Regis moved into third place in the Devon Cricket League Division C East with a comfortable six-wicket victory at Sidmouth Seconds last week. Sidmouth won the toss and decided to bat, but found the Up Lyme attack in an uncompromising mood, bowling them out for just 122 runs in 37 overs. Steve Beatty claimed four victims for the loss of 30 runs off eight overs. Up Lyme coasted to a six-wicket victory to win maximum points, losing just four wickets along the way. Top scorers were Australian overseas player Preston Hillis, Joe Ellsworth and Alfie Jacks. Upline moved into third place in the table, having won three out of six fixtures so far this season, five points behind second place Braunton. Easy to learn and fun to play, golf croquet can now be enjoyed in the beautiful setting of the King George playing field in Upline. Worldwide, golf croquet is a fast-growing version of this traditional sport and lasts about 40 minutes per game. During the pandemic, croquet clubs saw teenagers and students signing up for beginner courses. And as COVID restrictions continued, many families dusted off their garden croquet sets, and this has led to a surge in club membership across England. And in good news for East Devon and West Dorset, Lyme Regis Town Council has generously helped the Lynn Valley Croquet Club, based in Upline, to strengthen their main lawn's water defences. This has enabled the club to broaden its activities and they are now offering free group coaching, an opportunity for those who are interested to see if the game is right for them. And finally, congratulations to Lyme Regis bowlers Paul Moffat, Steve and Paul Pomeroy and Barry Rattenbury, who are through to the final of the Men's Force County Championships against Greenhill, which they will be playing in late July at Dorchester Bowling Club. The Lime Crime Literary Festival is currently underway at the Marine Theatre in Lime Regis with a busy programme of talks by crime and thriller authors and guest speakers, continuing until Saturday. Live music events this weekend will include local duo Guilty Pleasure at the Royal Standard this evening. The Nags Head will host its weekly live music night on Saturday from 9pm and the Marine Theatre will take on a Nat King Cole theme for its monthly Jazz in the Bar event on Sunday evening at 8pm. Slightly further afield, this weekend we'll also see Axminster stage the popular Axvale show, while Bridport will enjoy its annual food and beer festivals, and River Cottage will host its sub summer shindig festival at its Trinity Hill headquarters. The dry weather is expected to break this weekend. Make the most of the sunshine throughout the day today, with more cloud coverage and the chance of light drizzle expected on Saturday, and light rain showers on Sunday. Temperatures are set to reach highs of a slightly cooler 20 degrees. Thanks for watching Lime or Nine's video news bulletins. You can find the latest local news on our website throughout the week. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for regular updates and sign up to our free weekly newsletter to get the top stories sent straight to your inbox. Have a great weekend.